So welcome back to something a little bit different. I'm a little bit angry, and I decided to do a little bit of investigation into this. So about December time, before I disappeared off to Germany, I installed my um, Xenon ballast that stopped working. So I decided to go and buy some in a hurry, because I was leaving in a couple of days. A couple from Amazon, and they are this brand here, this Equi or H-E-Q-I, however you want to say that. And within like a month of me using them, they stopped working. Now, the seller hasn't got back to me about it, so I decided I'm going to tear one apart and have a look at how the circuitry is. Now, on the bottom here, I have the non-functioning one out of the car, the original Hella module. So this is made in Germany, Hella unit. And I'm honestly quite shocked at the difference in the PCB and just how poor quality this one is. So I figured I would do this as a little um, PSI, PSA to deter anyone from buying parts from Amazon for their cars, because it turns out they are actually quite terrible. Even if they work for a month, they might work really well for a month. And I'm going to explore in this one why this is so bad. So to start off with, here's a couple of basics. Here's the original Hello one. This is a ceramic PCB. So it's essentially one piece of ceramic, which is then bonded to the back panel. And you can see here we have bonding wires which go to the shell. So this will be for a ground connection. Looking at the non-genuine unit, we have a standard FR4 PCB. So this is one that typically you can get mass produced much cheaper than the ceramic boards because these are really expensive to build. No ground connection as far as I can see to the back panel. and when I show you this, we find it. So this is the case which they have on top of this unit here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, and that little pin there. Five connections on the pin. On the back, we only have five pins, which go into these really poorly soldered connection joints here. These are literally just wire bonds, like you would um, with an Arduino kit or something. They're just standard wire terminals. Um, I really don't know if these can support 35 watts, but apparently they can because it says so on the case. Now let's compare that to the Hella module, the OE unit. What you'll notice here is there is again five terminals, but there's also this bond here which goes to again the case, which connects to this part on the PCB. The other non-genuine unit doesn't have this connection to ground. So essentially this board is floating in terms of its ground plane compared to the shell which is also then connected to the car shell. So I don't know if that might impede or make something a little bit worse electrically with the car. But this board as far as it is concerned is grounded to the rest of the vehicle because this is grounded to the case which is then grounded to the car. There is obviously the minus connection on the power which goes back to the battery terminal but maybe that's not everything that this board needs. Physically design-wise though, they have basically copied the original module, so you've got your input power phase here, which goes to this big MOSFET on both boards, then to what I think this is a transformer, because it needs to output like a thousand or so volts to the, um, to the xenon bulb, and then some other support circuitry here and some MOSFETs on the original one, and there's those MOSFETs here, and control thing here, I don't know, I don't know what this chip is, I'm gonna quickly look up what this chip is. Okay, I have done some digging and I cannot work out what this guy is. Um, obviously, so it's got the Hella logo on it. I suppose this is some proprietary chip by Hella to do something with the Xenon module. But again, that's high engineering cost right there. Whereas this is using off-the-shelf components. So these are some pretty poor MOSFETs that they've used. They're not rated for the type of um, voltage which the Xenon headlight would use, so they probably deteriorated. Then they also have here another one of those, so they've got one, two, three, four, five poor MOSFETs. This one here I suppose is probably okay because it's on the input power phase, so that's likely going to be for low voltage, so I'll allow that one there. But again, they, they seem to only like this manufacturer called KIA. Um, I'll put on screen whatever um, whatever data sheets I find about these parts but generally the rest of the board is pretty poorly constructed like even here in the corner you can actually see where it's delaminated or separated the PCB this is when we opened it from what we saw 
and they've also actually glued the whole thing shut whereas on the Hella module there's no need to glue it because they have this nice gasket on it whereas on the non-genuine one they've got a this thing here but what I'd also like to say is it looks like when they make these they take the original Hella module and then they recycle it and what I mean by that is the back planes are identical in terms of construction and on the front they have the same text so this is the genuine one no this is the genuine one this is the non-genuine one and as you can see they, they all have the exact same text on them pretty much including the German text which is weird if one's made in China so I suspect what they're doing is they're buying these cases of defunct units and then polishing them making them look nice and clean and then putting their own components in the inside of it and shipping that off so these are definitely at least case wise not new but yeah I thought I just wanted to do this very quick video to go over these um, poor ballasts that I've got so what I currently have in the car now is some new second hand ones of uh, of another car that I found on eBay so they should hopefully work and if they do fail I will bite the bullet and buy new ones because I've got 50 watt xenons in so what I suspect to happen is because I've got the super bright uh, Osram laser nightbreaker ones this module can barely support about 30 watts yet alone the 35 it says in the box so I think it died trying to supply for those uh, high wattage bulbs Whereas I think the Hella module can safely do it, even though it states on here it's only rated for 35 watts. But, yeah. Also, some of the... I was going to say as well, some of the other components on here just aren't rated for the kind of voltage which the Xenons actually want. So, they say on here it says 1,100 volts, that's normal for Xenons. But these MOSFETs here can only support like 500 volts, so I don't know how that physically works. Um... I suspect maybe my intermittent problem is caused by these not being able to supply such enough voltage to keep the light alive. So as you go over a bump or so, or sh the car shakes a little bit, the light dies for a second, the ballast cannot sustain it. And then you get an error message saying the light's defunct, and then within like 5 seconds the light turns back on again, when it can finally light it back up. But I definitely noticed when I put the, the new second hand modules, or say new second hand, the OEM second hand modules back in, the xenons actually go from like their uh, their cold phase to their hot color much quicker. So again, that probably state that probably is indicative of the fact that this cannot actually supply enough power to the xenons compared to the OE one. So yeah, I just wanted to do this video as a little PSA about why you should not buy these cheaper OE alternatives for certain parts, even if it may look appealing because I fell for that and I've learned my lesson not to buy stuff like this. And as usual, feel free to share uh, this video if you feel like a friend of yours might actually benefit from knowing why Chinese parts are not good for their car, especially some of the more technical cars. But other than that, the TCU project is still going. I'm still going to be making some videos on that. I've just got a lot of technical stuff to document for a video. And I will see you guys in the next one then. So, uh, goodbye.